Hi, it's still February 10, 2018. I'm going to read excerpts of this 23-page paper out of Cornell University, Unconventional Research in USSR and Russia. This research is the unconventional research in Russia from the end of the 19th until the beginning of the 21st century. They have been researching and studying and experimenting and applying these microwave electromagnetic frequencies. And the reason why I'm reading this is because if you have an understanding of what these frequencies really can do to us, then you might reduce your exposure, but you'll have a greater understanding as to why we have such an exponential increase in physical and mental diseases, diseases of our psyche, spiritual diseases. They're affecting everything and all life forms. So don't just think it's human beings. All life is being affected by these microwave electromagnetic frequencies the work here, this paper, all right, how it came to be was documents were obtained, those documents coming out of the uh, Soviet Union. And unfortunately, the Soviet Union began to not disclose, they didn't publish any further studies on the use of microwave frequencies for good reason, well, then the masses would understand what was happening. But they stopped publishing their result, re, um, results in the 80s. So this paper pertains to studies prior to the 80s. We're in 2018, guys. The technology that they are using on us is phenomenal. And we can spend 24-7 researching, trying to figure out all of the technology that they are using. But we can only get, as far as I'm concerned, we can only grasp a very small percentage of the technology that they, they are now applying, not just researching, experimenting with, but applying. But what we do know is a technology like we have never seen before. So in this work, we attempt, based on a large number of open publications, to estimate the boundary of unconventional research in Russia and the Soviet Union. We demonstrate that these works are historically concentrated within three large areas. Long distance biological signal transmission, including plants, animals, and humans. Mind matter phenomena, different ESP effects, and similar topics. Two, non-ionizing, in particular electromagnetic emissions from human and its impact on human physiology, and more generally on different biological systems, and three, phenomena related to the generation and detection of high penetrating emission from biological and non-biological origins. So what did I just say? Well, I just said that all of the research was pertaining to frequencies, artificial frequencies, that were produced external to the human being and those frequencies internal to the human being. And the connection between the two, the external frequencies affecting the internal frequencies of the human being. It's really um, they're using this, guys. They're using it. The studies on biological effects of weak electromagnetic emissions. Electromagnetic emission 
have shown that mechanisms of higher nervous activity can be affected by microwave radiation. The impact of medium and short electromagnetic waves modulated by low frequency signals, in other words, pulsing, on separate areas of the brain responsible for emotional state and functionality of different organs. The biological effects of electromagnetic radiation. Various biological effects can be explained by unequal absorption of microwave energy by different tissues of the body. When you have the understanding that they understand your organs ab absorption rate of these microwave radiations. The excitation of some parts of a nervous system, that's what it does. They're directing these microwave electromagnetic pulses right at your nervous system. So if the absorption of electromagnetic energy takes place in nerves and nerve cells, a negligible a small, very small portion of the energy absorbed is enough to produce a number of secondary phenomena in the body caused by the excitation of a nerve. All parts of the electromagnetic spectrum contain some bands which act differently on biological objects, in particular on the nervous system of a living organism. Now, you guys, you remember this? Do you know about this? Patent? Nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. Monitors. Um, publication date, January 14, 2003. Filing date, June 2001. Physiological effects have been observed in a human subject in response to stimulation of the skin with weak electromagnetic fields that are pulsed with certain frequencies near half a hertz or 2.4 hertz. Now the 2.4 hertz, I believe, and now I'm just going to check so I'm going to pause you. Okay, so I was close. I thought that we switched over to the 2.4 hertz phones in the early 90s, but it was 1998 that we started using 2.4 hertz cell phones. And here we have, if you pulse with certain frequencies near half hertz or 2.4 hertz, such as to excite a sensory resonance, you can produce physiological effects in a human subject. Many computer monitors and TV tubes, when displaying pulsed images, emit pulsed electromagnetic fields of sufficient amplitudes to cause such excitation. It is therefore possible to manipulate the nervous system of a subject by pulsing images displayed on a nearby computer monitor or TV set. For the latter, the TV set, the image pulsing may be embedded in the program material or it may be overlaid by modulating a video stream either as a radio frequency signal or as a video signal. The image displayed on a computer monitor may be pulsed effectively by a simple computer program for certain monitors pulsed electromagnetic fields capable of exciting sensory resonances in nearby subjects may be generated even as the displayed images are pulsed with subliminal intensity. They're affecting our nervous system. They are manipulating the pulses coming out of TVs and computer monitors. Isn't that great? No, it's really not great. Not great at all. But take a look at this. 
Very interesting, isn't it? All right. So, experiments conducted by Soviet researchers found, concluded, that the lead shield holds the radiation. Lead. Many have speculated that we were suddenly taking lead out of homes, removing lead, the lead paint was no longer considered a safe paint. And many speculated that it was because lead would prevent their use of microwave electromagnetic frequencies to spy on us, to get the microwave electromagnetic frequencies through that lead paint, guess what? I think they were right. So in this experiment, what happened was that it was manifested by increasing time until the test person fell down in comparison with experiments in which the screen was not used. So they'd hold up a lead shield or screen and the electromagnetic frequencies were unable to penetrate that lead screen. But the person that they were experimenting with, the frequencies, that person didn't hold up a lead screen, that person fell down. It can be assumed that the psychophysiological effects of microwave emission were actively investigated during the nationalist socialist regime in Germany. And after 1945, the technology was adopted by the country's winners. Yay! The country's winners, the United States. The first mentioning, mentioning of the fact that the pulse modulated electromagnetic radiation can cause auditory hallucination was back in 1956. Already in the 1950s, the USSR and the USA had their own programs on studying the impact of electromagnetic fields on biological objects. It's 2018. The USSR and the USA competed with one another in their uh, vying to be the first to get the technology to use in a quote-unquote non-lethal way to control the masses. Yes, CIA program 1958, uh, 53, uh, the CIA began MK Ultra. I didn't know this. I didn't know how many institutions, universities, hospitals, prisons, and private researchers were involved in this program. 80 institutions, 44 universities, 12 hospitals, three prisons, and 185 private researchers participated in MKUltra. But German physicians with experience from concentration camps were involved in MKUltra. Project Paperclip, where we brought over these psychopathic, mad scientists, physicians, um, physicists. They came over to the United States. They were given new names, new identities to continue, continue their studies, their experiments. Right here in the United States. Part of the MK Ultra program devoted itself to the influence of electromagnetic fields on the human physiological and psychological conditions. The 
area of influencing electromagnetic fields on biological objects. Authors point to the application, application of research re results in the form of new weapons. U.S. researchers, and this was a quote from a, I believe, a Soviet researcher. U.S. researchers have confirmed the possibility of affecting functions of the nervous system by weak electromagnetic frequencies fields. Electromagnetic frequencies may cause acoustic hallucination, radio sound, and reduce the sensitivity of humans and animals to some other stimuli to change the activity of the brain, especially the hypothalamus and the cortex. Hypothalamus. When you read papers like this and you come across, hmm, okay, electromagnetic frequencies, they can change the activity of the brain they can change the activity, especially of the hypothalamus. Well, then you got to do some research on the hypothalamus. What, what's the hypothalamus? Well, the hypothalamus is very, very important. I can't get this ad off. Um, it's the region of the brain lying between uh, or below the thalamus. The hypothalamus is an integral part of the brain. It's a small cone-shaped structure that projects downward from the brain and it has a connection to the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland. Well, let's check out the pituitary gland later. But when you get that these frequencies, well, if they can affect the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus is an integral part of the brain, then they can affect an awful lot. If it's connected to the pituitary, pituitary gland, then they can affect the pituitary gland. And if the hypothalamus controls the autonomic nervous system and has effects on the endocrine system, then it can affect all of those Systems. Hypothalamus, the human nervous system. Hypothalamus and pituitary gland are connected by both nervous and chemical pathways. Which means if they can affect the hypothalamus, they can affect your nervous and chemical pathways. And it regulates an awful lot of hormone secretion and neurotransmitters and axons and synapses, neurons. Has four classic neurotransmitters, epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and acetylcholine. And we're screwed because they are fooling around with all of this. And as I am talking to you, the unbelievable buzzing that I am hearing is uh, not fun. And my left ear drum feels like it's closed off. But the connection of the hypothalamus to many other regions of the brain, including the cerebral cortex, allows intellectual and functional signals as well as external signals including physical and emotional stresses to be funneled into the hypothalamus to the endocrine system. From the endocrine system these signals are able to exert their effects throughout the entire body. Oh my god, the hypothalamus has something to do with intellectual and functional signals and physical and emotional stresses it regulates all of that. The hypothalamus produces and secretes not only neurotransmitters and neuropeptides, but also several neurohormones that alter anterior pituitary gland function and two hormones, vasopressin and oxytocin. Well, oxytocin, 
click on that, what what does oxytocin do? Because these external artificial microwave electromagnetic pulsing frequencies are affecting all of this in our bodies. Oxytocin, neurohormone. Oxytocin is thought to influence a number of other physiological and behavioral processes as well, particularly sexual and social behavior in males and females. Oxytocin is produced by the hypothalamus, stored and secreted into the bloodstream from the pituitary gland. It is synthesized and secreted in other tissues, including the brain, uterus, placenta, ovaries, and testes. Wow. And when you get to uh, portions of the article like this, oxytocin deficiency impairs milk ejection with offspring susceptible to death from starvation shortly after birth. So these effects of these microwave electromagnetic frequencies don't only affect the human being, but it's affecting all life. So when you think about the deer and the foxes and all life, coyotes and they're affected too. So if they're oxytocin deficient, then they may be giving birth to their babies and they're unable to produce milk for them. Oxytocin receptors are also expressed on tissues of the male reproductive tract, including in the epididymis, uh, sorry, penis, pro prostate, testes, and vas deferens. Well, that's not good. Although the function of oxytocin binding in these tissues is not fully understood, it is suspected that it plays a role in facilitating ejaculation and sperm transport. Infertility. Infertility. Oxytocin and its receptors also play a role in social motivation, social recognition, trust, and pair bonding. Correlated with marital quality. Individuals with autism, oxytocin administered via nasal inhalation was associated with increased attentiveness to facial stimuli and enhanced social aptitude. Wow. It actually affects how we socialize with one another. So when you see what is happening with relationships, even within the awake crowd, quote unquote, uh, no trust here. People just uh, not behaving the way that people used to behave. We're all being affected by these frequencies. Oxytocin modulates responsiveness to social stimuli through effects on the region of the brain known as the amygdala. Oxytocin infused into the uh, amygdalas of mice with social amnesia, which is the inability to recognize individuals. They completely uh, had restored the animal's ability to recognize social contacts. And oxytocin modulates fear and responses to threatening stimuli. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, you, you might want to say that I'm an overkill kind of gal going into the details, but you do really have to understand that this, these frequencies are affecting virtually, well, they affect every cell in our body. So, they're affecting our bodies.
but our brains, particularly the hypothalamus, which is directly and or indirectly the regulator of our emotions. So they have an awful lot of control over us. <clears throat> and many people may be experiencing things that um, they're seeing as, well, you know, uh, normal. They might just judge an individual as, I don't know, being reactive or whatever. Or maybe too aggressive or too hostile. Uh, just not not really functioning the way that somebody wants them to function in a relationship. And that causes a lot of conflict within the relationship. It may very well be a result of these frequencies, which is very, very upsetting. So yes, um, the EMFs can cause acoustic hallucinations. And well, that could leave a person being diagnosed with schizophrenia. Um, oh, dopamine. I forgot the dopamine part of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Dopamine related to Parkinson's disease. Uh, but too much dopamine can get you a diagnosis of schizophrenia. Too little can cause Parkinson's. But the dopamine, have you seen articles or videos with people talking about how the cell phone is addictive because it's affecting the dopamine in your brain? Well, dopamine is also related to like that reward center in your brain. So they're affecting dopamine, they're affecting the pituitary gland, they're affecting uh, oxytocin, they're affecting the hypothalamus. My God. Can you imagine if we were just living back when we were living without all of all of this new technology? How life would be? It would be so it would be so much better. My God, all we would have to do is resolve our own personal issues and then we could go on living life as it was supposed to be lived. But we don't have a chance here to live life as it was meant to be lived. So, uh, reduces sensitivity of humans and animals. It changes the activity of the brain. It breaks the processes of formation processing and information storage in the brain. It has non-specific changes in the central nervous system. And the development of the appropriate hardware in the USSR, they had already installed Radiosan, Radiosan, which was their device to emit these frequencies. They had already conducted pre-tests prior to 1973, and they got positive results. In 1974, they used the radio sun and they effectively treated a city with these electromagnetic emissions, a city of about a hundred square kilometers. They plunged the inhabitants into a deep sleep. And that radio sun was 55 kilometers away from the transmitter they were able to plunge a city into deep sleep. Microwave radiation in the areas of super high frequency and, and uh, extremely high frequency for impacting the psyche. And most well-known fact, a fact that I didn't know, there was a strange antenna in the office of President of the Russian Federation Boris 
Yelston. Wasn't he the drunk? Yes, he was. Um, this antenna had been installed to provide psychological impact on the president. High penetrating emission, which differs from electromagnetic radiation. If you want to know about high penetrating emission, you can check out the book here, and here are the authors. Uh, by the way, this paper, if you do research on electromagnetic frequencies and this microwave technology, click on the link below, go to this paper, and go to the references. Go to the references, because there's a lot of them. Um, so, yeah, they're using this, guys. The high penetrating radiation from non-biological origin, which means the radiation produced artificially from cell towers, cell phones, all of the gadgets that we're using. Even in the 30s, it was already known that high penetrating radiation possesses some properties of light and can be handled with prisms and gratings. Some properties of electromagnetic radiation can be handled with a variety of screens and mirrors reflecting the electromagnetic radiation. Screens, like aluminum screening, can reduce some of the radiation. I believe that that's what they're referring to. In this article, there's a chart of studies which you can pause the you can pause the um, video to check it out but the results were positive on these experiments of the experiments that were conducted years decades decades ago um, and the USA USSR competed the 1980s were characterized in general in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union created a system of well-organized and conspiratorial work to develop new methods and means of resolving interstate and internal, internal political problems without involving intimidating power forces and damaging effects including methods of obtaining timely information, right? Spying on others and not the traditional way. So the microwaves, the electromagnetic frequencies allowed them to extract data in timely information. The 5G rollout will allow our government or militaries to extract all of the data about us in real time. That's how fast it is. And in the mid-80s, um, documents show that Quote, unquote, the Soviet Union, their Council of Ministers uh, for Science and Technology, the KGB, and other agencies, quote, unquote, take steps to organize the works. Management of living objects, including humans. So... That's exactly what it was all about, managing humans. Publication was stopped, and researchers feared losing their academic jobs. So the KGB, this was a conference, 1995. What was said at this conference, as we are leading, as we are the leading organization, KGB, in Russia on Torsen Technologies, which is the um, electromagnetic microwave, electromagnetic emissions. I can responsibly say that while technological experiments allow sometimes obtaining results 
that go far beyond our fantasy, modern torsion generators are rather primitive and it is difficult to expect that tomorrow or the day after tomorrow that may appear sources of torsion radiation that could solve the problem of controlling human behavior. I do not believe in this, that this one particular ethical KGB person but he also went on to say there is an international organization of scientists involved in the study of electromagnetic radiation, including their effect on humans. From a technical point of view, there is no reason why it would be impossible to make a machine which impacts the human. I have no doubt about the fact that this kind of technique exists in many countries of the world. So the author of this paper wrote, the technology is primitive. It was primitive in, in 1995. Um, less primitive in 2013. It's 2018. So yes, they have advanced this technology. Even now, it is not too difficult to develop a non-lethal technology that is used for mind control, controlling large populations. The propaganda aspect of humanitarian warfare is merely a sideshow. The technology itself that enlists the enthusiasm of Pentagon planners and law enforcement officials, they're using this technology not just on us, they've been using this technology, that's what the, uh, the first Gulf War was about, but when we go into these countries, when we occupy, invade them, we're using technology against them. And we're just saying that it's for humanitarian reasons we've got to go into this country. It's the enthusiasm of Pentagon planners, law enforcement officials. Friendly force technology, which involves electromagnetic fields and directed energy radiation and ultrasound or infrasound, <clears throat> infrasound weapons, the same technology used to stimulate the brain, used to mind control. Here are a partial list of promoters of the technology. You can read them. Um, the U.S. interest in less than lethal technology dates back to the 1960s. The State Department became aware of low energy microwave radiation directed at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow. Project Pandora, secret research into the Moscow radiation continued for 10 years. Embassy employees were informed that they were on the receiving end of these frequencies, these microwaves. Large number of illnesses were reported at the embassy. And a review of the Soviet scientific journals revealed that the microwaves affected cell membranes cell membranes, and increase the excitability of nerve cells. And, yeah, there was secrecy surrounding a project named Pandora. Uh, it encouraged speculation within the U.S. intelligence community and elsewhere. Researchers knew that a low-energy microwave beam could be modulated with an audiogram and actually convey a recognizable message into an irradiated brain. Wow. So way back when, they were already, they already had the technology to implant voices into an irradiated brain. And Alan Dulles, the first CIA director, 1953, mind control applied on an individual level. This is what he mentioned. Non-ionizing radiation can be broadcast to large populations. Techniques such as psychosurgery implants and electronic stimulation of the brain can be administered on a case-by-case -case basis. Targeted individuals? Yeah, this is what is happening. So, it is only those who have not done the research and act like they're still in seventh grade, 
that deny this reality and then come out and shame those who are trying to educate them and really shame the targeted individual who desperately needs support for what they are going through. It's simply that that kind of behavior comes from pure ignorance and self-centeredness. Just don't want to be bothered. All links are below.